What's going on? This is Chromio. You are live from the mothership. Right, P? Yes, we are. Yeah. And you're here with Future Music. And uh, we have a full day ahead of us. We will answer some songwriting questions. We will take you through a tour of the facility and all the synths. We will answer technical questions. Yeah. We'll talk about the drums we use. We'll talk about gear. Yeah. We'll talk about the bass we use. And we're actually going to uh, whip up a little track or a little demo for you to see. Uh, so you get a sneak peek inside the process of, uh, of us, your friends in funk. Well, uh, we, we both worked uh, a little bit independently. So P lives here. Well, he lives upstairs. As <laughs> I live see. here. Yeah. This is where I sleep. And so uh, he makes demos here. Uh, I write songs wherever I am. Um, and uh, P will send me demos that he makes here. And uh, I'll give my feedback and so on and so forth. And then I'll link up with P uh, and usually like come here and um, work on demos with him on songs that I've written previously. And uh, usually if they stick, he'll work on them by himself and uh, come back to me with modifications on, on the stuff that, that I uh, started with him. So, you know, you've got songs that start with a P demo and songs that start with kind of a Dave idea. And then a P demo I kind of, you know, work on myself and and, uh, and, and add stuff and build into a track. And a Dave idea, <clears throat> P will just sit with here and add different ideas and different kind of um, elements to it. Yeah. So explain what those, the P idea and the Dave idea sound like separately. I mean, are P's ideas instrumental synth tracks and yours guitar yeah. and vocals? No, not really, actually. Well, no, the, most of the P demos are very basic grooves. Um, Sometimes I'll add a chorus to it, mm -hmm. uh, and Dave's gonna, you know, if he likes the chorus, he keeps the chorus, writes a verse, or changes some lyrics. And a Dave idea is mostly uh, phone messages. <laughs> and uh, when we are here together, he always, when we're done with whatever we're doing, we'll stay at the end and drop a couple of scratch vocals, mm -hmm. scratch vocals on top of like usually uh, drum tracks very simple pattern. And yeah, we'll, we'll show you guys how we'll do like a sort of a Dave idea because I, I, we'll use a, like P said, we'll <coughs> use a drum tracks, some, a very sort of a temporary drum machine that still has our 80s groove to it and uh, a temporary bass sound and, uh, and then P takes that and, and runs with it and, uh, and I'll have my vocals on it, scratch vocals, because usually my ideas come with like a verse and a chorus as well. <coughs> um, but you know, a lot of P's ideas for this new album had a, a chorus or elements at least of a chorus built in. With, with lyrics as well? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Night by Night, you know, we had like three quarters of the chorus and, um, and the main guitar riff and then I came in and, and added like another bass and you know, we'll change the drums if need be, but that's how we, we end up working together. So, so you know, when a song starts, it's, it's one or it's the other, but we always end up working through everything together. Um, all the way down to the recording process. So, I mean, as you two have sort of distanced slightly in sort of location, mm. um, is, has it changed the songwriting? Do you have to be sort of more strict by how you do it? I mean, because I guess originally you both just were making demos together. Not right? really. No, not really. Actually, not no. Even since the first album, we've had both our ideas. Because, you know, if I'm here and I have something going on in my head, I, it's, it's stupid to wait, you know, just yeah. going to get it ready and... You already know if he likes it or not. He knows in the first minute of listening. So yeah, so, so you don't really have a period of right. We've got a week in the studio together to do this without an idea. It's always no. an idea no. before you get together. Yeah, yeah there's. I mean, there, there's stuff that we write. There are songs like that we wrote in the studio together. But even those songs came from elements of, of previous demos that one or, or the other um, had sort of put together separately. You see what I mean? put together separately or <laughs> had written separately um, but yeah so so it's it starts you know I'm by myself in my house and I'll I'll just you know come up with songs or concepts or melodies and, and, and 
what instrument is that usually on Dave? Sorry. On the answering machine. <laughs> That's his instrument. Yeah, the instrument is my answering machine or a little voice recording device on my phone now that I have it. It's great. That's all I use. You just discovered it. Yeah, I just discovered it. <laughs> this summer. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit of a Luddite when it comes to that stuff. So I just sing. But usually yeah, I have it all in my head so that when P and I are together, we can lay things out quite fast together when it's, um, when it's a, a, a flushed out idea in my head. And P is more empirical, so he needs to make a lot of demos and um, send me a bunch of tracks. And, uh, and out of those tracks, I, he trusts me to pick what I think is best. And then, you know, it's, it's the same when I submit an idea to him with a vocal idea. <coughs> I know if he doesn't work on it or if it doesn't stick, it's not. You know, there's no point in forcing it. So there's filtering instantly. Yeah, exactly. We, we each filter our, our We ideas. never really throw away songs because we do it as we go. Mm -hmm. There's not like, there's never, you know, a time where we're like, okay, we have 30 songs, let's choose. The if they make it, it exactly. if they make it to the end, it means you know we know we're gonna keep it. Yeah. This is a, a completely archaic. It's it's now uh, famous on the web because of another in the studio feature <laughs> that we filmed, <laughs> and everybody tells talks to us about it. This is our famous old Pentium two two. <laughs> Cakewalk sequencer um, that's what we've been using since the first album and prior to that as well when we were just hip hop producers and uh, we had a, a you know like like we showed you before we had like the S950 and um, we didn't know what to sequence with it so P found that program and uh, taught me how to use it and it's been our idiosyncratic thing ever since we're the pretty we're pretty much the two only people that use this on planet earth in fact if any kid out there, if there's like little computer wizards that want to give us a, a Mac version, a Mac of version of the exact same, same program. MIDI, yeah, this is calling out all the studio <coughs> wizards, all the all not studio, all the programming, not studio, the programming wizards. Yeah, the computer engineers out there. If you guys, we, we want the Chromio version of this. This is only <laughs> MIDI sequen sequencing. We we record a little bit of audio into it. It's horrible. What is it? Very eight little. bit? Sixteen bit? <laughs> Sixteen bit. Sixteen bit. We record a little bit of audio, and basically when it's so good that we figured you know we'll give it to Zadar, and when we mix the album, it'll sound it'll it'll come off and it'll blend in with the rest. But otherwise, this uh, yeah this it's program just used came, for, uh, came to me on a disc from my Lebanese uncle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he had a series of programs and like, ooh, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's it, I mean, all of the modern programs are really good for, for um, making music on your computer, i.e., like, you know, using soft synths. And, but look at all the hardware we have around us. We, we just need a really good MIDI trigger for all this stuff. That's what we need. So it's a way longer and more arduous process because um, we still work in the traditional method in which, you know, songwriting, demoing, producing, tracking. tracking, and mixing are different steps, and then eventually mastering and artwork. And so, so, you know, this is the very traditional way of working. So say now we would be at a demoing phase. Uh, like we said earlier, we use the sequential um, circuits, drum tracks. As, the, uh, as our go-to um, drum machine. So say, let's say we'll, we'll do a song that's, or, or kind of a track idea that uh, is maybe more, I don't know, chord based uh, than just like a s straight up funk number. So it's, I was hearing P play some chords on the world, it's early on, in, in the key of a D, I believe, right? I think so. Yeah. So we just program something. Velocity is key. It's going to take a few minutes. There we go. 
So sometimes it's P on the computer, sometimes it's me. It doesn't really matter. So, I mean, people used to do this by hand, but in our nerdiness, we just do it, we just do it like that. We do it with numbers and velocities, as you can see on the screen. So let's start here, 90, 70, 60, 40. That's always cool. Every machine has a, has a way of reacting to different velocities. So it takes time to find the right velocity and then lay it down. Do you think that's, that's really important people programming drums? That's a, it'd be quite easy to just use that to, to yeah. like, drilling it out, wouldn't it? Velocity really What, to, to, to do it with, it with the hands? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Live? No, no, for what you're doing now. Oh. Changing the velocity as well. Yeah, but that... And it sort of sucks out the groove. Yeah, yeah but that's 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 because they suck. I mean, that this is this is the trick right there to get... The, you know. Watch, watch one of them. Oh. oh. Observe, 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 observe. So you just now do that. that is funk. We have conversations on which velocity, you know. <laughs> is best. What do you sure. think? Where, where do you think we should go? Ten. Yeah. Right. You can't do that, you know, with live or, you know, anything else. Yeah. So let's just do this. And I'll add other shit to it. That's how it starts. Huh? That's how it starts. Yeah. Watch, 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 watch. Foutu referme. Yeah, j'ai compris. Ça serait ici, hein. cool drum that sounds kind of like a it's it's that's this is our style man it's So we could have basically this is, this could go two ways, you know. You could have what P was playing on the whirly and what I was playing on the bass, which was almost like a kind of jazzy chord thing, or we could have what he was just playing on the on the bass, which was like a straight up funk number. So we could try with the first bass line, which was what <laughs> I was doing, 
based on the chords he was playing. So um, you go here, and it, like we told you before, like we like to keep the bass programmed and written in MIDI, so it just has that robotic feel, you know. So you would go here. Obviously, all sixteenths. If the yeah. notes are stuck together, the envelope, yeah, the filter so envelope. You gotta find the right duration. It's gonna stay, so you gotta. There we go, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So the secret of that bass line is having some notes overlap so it, so it pulls and some notes overlap. It, it, yeah, yeah. It's, I can't explain it. Like in the 80s, they did it live, you know? But, and it sounded cool because it was a <coughs> human playing a weird thing, but we, we just like to have it like the machine feel. Where, where every, it, it's always the same with every loop, well, I guess. They, I, I can't they, explain they it. It's just it our with, style, man. They, just, they used to do it with sequencers, too, in the Yes. Yeah. But we were just really basically anal we, particular about the duration. Basically, thing. we bypass all the sync problems because they used to spend a lot of time syncing different machines with their own sequencers together. We just centralize the sequencing there so all the machines are on the same time code. You know? You know, you heard of people piggybacking two Junos or two Jupiters and sequencing a bunch of stuff and then trying to put, you know, the LM1 behind it and try to sync everything. This is just centralized sequencing with its own groove, you know. No, no, no. It has its own swing. There is swing options there, but... So you just put it on the wall and it, it goes yeah. just... Yeah. Well, with, you know, with your pattern and the velocities, if you just put a straight beat, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna follow a straight line, but it's gonna have a little... You know. And I guess the sinus themselves have a little bit... It's very subtle, but the main groove is, you know, it's us. It's... We just move the notes, though, sometimes.
All right, so that sounds pretty cool. Um, <laughs> so let's say we wanted to really keep, I mean, obviously here's, we have a problem. We have an instrument that is not MIDI. So we'll just record it into this crap. When we get to the studio, we'll either re-record it or, um, or use the crap. Doesn't matter, as long as it feels good. Yeah, that way it frees P so he can do some funky talk box or we'll have him do some vocal order bits. So the dream setup would be this software on a Mac synced with Pro Tools or anything separate. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that again so all the kids hear us. Because <laughs> I know there's a kid out there who's A, a Chromio fan and B can program this. Sync with Pro Tools but using this interface so that when we record it, we use it and we see the wave in this interface but when we go back to Pro Tools, then it's a whole thing with levels and you have to go back make sure it's not peaking and seems pretty good now so this okay well the process we're seeing now doesn't happen that often anymore usually no no it do does it totally does oh, okay. what, what we're doing what do you mean as in like working together like this I no we, that's all we oh, do yeah. but it's like usually we'll do this but mm -hmm. starting from something that one of us has written before okay, okay. but mo it, when it's when we're working on dave's uh answering machine <laughs> demos this is how it works yeah this is how it works yeah. and then and then when we're working on piece pre-existing tracks we're more like picking them apart we already have what we're doing now we'll have that let's say yeah. but then, then i'll come in and we'll do something that we call you know sound substitution i'll be like i don't like the kick or i don't like the bass line let's do it on <laughs> something else it's more like repair you know but and adding you and know adding, you know. Hard to explain. And then sequencing also, that's very important. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, you could, you know, now it's it's almost a little too jazzy for our taste. So yeah. we'd add like some funk, some mm -hmm. funk twirlies. There we go. There we go. Thank you. 
Yes. So for instance, while P plays this, is this fun? Or yeah. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so we'll we'll <laughs> say we'll put us. guitar. While he does this, I'll just put guitar. I left the reverb. Enlève, enlève, enlève. Enlève encore. Enlève encore. Mets genre la moitié de ce qu'il y a comme reverb.